Good morning, and welcome to Wayne's World of Science and Technology. Or good afternoon. I'm never quite sure about things like that. Depends on what time zone, I guess. Anyway, um, I've been kind of delayed in getting another video out because I was waiting on some gear. The gear finally arrived. I now have a webcam that actually looks half decent. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, I, I just really didn't like the first video because... Um, Building webcam on a Mac quite frankly sucks. But then building webcams on most things suck. So anyway, um, today I want to talk about paleoanthropology and sensor technology. A totally odd thing for most point to most people's point of view, but I think you'll understand where I'm getting to in a few moments. One of the biggest problems that paleoanthropology has is finding stuff. Uh, fossils in particular, but finding anything, it's damn difficult because you don't know where the stuff is. You've got a piece of rock and it's got a fossil in it. How do you tell? Well, unless there's a bit sticking out, you can. So, how do you tell if there's a fossil in there? Well, one way that has been used quite a bit is uh, magnetic resonance imaging, which is um, quite valuable. But you have to have a rock the size that will fit into an MRI machine. If you were to, say, try and um, check the wall of the cave for fossils, well, you're not going to be able to put the wall of the cave into an MRI machine, of course, so it won't be able to work. And um, this, at this point, I need to digress just a bit. Fossils are rare. Um, I think most people know that, and it's really important to find as many as we can. Now, one of the um, big issues with this is fossils are usually found encased in uh, rock, sedimentary rock. So you end up with uh, places like um, my favorite caves in South Africa. I just adore those caves. They are so fantastic. But you've got a cave wall. How do you tell there's a fossil in there. In Kenya, another place I absolutely adore and I'd love to go there and visit the Inca Foundation someday. And guess what? You turn around and you find out that all the rocks are embedded in sediment, uh, rocky things. So, you, you know, in two different places, in Kenya we're finding stuff because the erosion is slowly bringing um, things to the surface. Whereas in South Africa, we're finding stuff because we're looking in places where people thought that they might likely find things, and, you know, they're, they're, they're in there digging around finding the stuff. But it was deposited in a totally different way. Um, in Kenya, the depo deposition was surface. So you had, you know, say, somebody who died, and their body would get covered by... Um, material before it was predated, and then what would happen is over the years it would fossilize. In South Africa, what happened was um, in a lot of cases it looks like flash floods or other um, events killed the um, hominids that were found, and that basically the um, you know, that the bodies were protected because they're in these caves and not necessarily accessible to predators. So, how do you tell whether or not there's a fossil on the ground in Kenya if it isn't sticking out? You can't. How do you tell if a fossil was in a wall in South Africa? Well, you can't unless it's sticking out. The same with a whole pile of other fossil uh, uh, localities sorry, I'm having problems speaking, in uh, Africa. Uh, look at Jebel Harun. That's another place where you've got this, um, you, you've got all these wonderful bones that are encased in rock. So, we got lucky. We found them. They were sticking out. But, how can we find them without them sticking out? And this is where it gets into the fun part. I've been playing around and you'll have to excuse me here, I am not actually an expert on sensor technology. I know a heck of a lot, but the 
this does not make me an expert, and I am not the sort of person to design this. However, I do understand the basics. I understand how it works in a general, uh, well, more than a general uh, way. I actually have a fairly decent knowledge of it for an um, amateur scientist. So what you've got is you've got this, what, or what I want to do, I should say, you guys know what, what I want to do is I want to build the sensor technology for this. Now, there are two types of sensor technology that would probably work in uh, fossil bearing strata. Now, this is something that would have to be checked. I don't have the money to do it. It would need, uh, I suspect, quite a large endowment from the university to work out. But what you're talking about is using, what I'm talking about is, is using either sound waves transmitted through the wall, much the way that we use sound waves to map the Earth itself, to map the fossils and the um, breaks in the rock and everything else. This would, if it works, of course, make things a lot easier. The question is, can sound waves be used for that? And, well, military technology is another one of my hobbies. I have so many hobbies, my hobbies have hobbies. And um, the work that has been done on uh, sonar systems over the last uh, 20 years has been really interesting. Although I say the work that has been done, the publicly known work. Obviously, I have no idea what has been done uh, in uh, you know, under uh, secrecy, but we're, you know, we're talking general technology. We use similar technology uh, and are using similar technology right now. If you uh, have been following the uh, work that's being done on the moon, one of the uh, landers there has been trying to map the interior of the moon by uh, using uh, sound waves. And there's this is something that can be done. You've got a moonquake, the moonquake gives just enough of a, a shake to um, start all these sound waves bouncing around. And with the proper sensor technology on the other end, you can pick up these sound waves. And with high powered computers, you can interpret them. And this could be a way of doing it. Another way that I thought of doing it would be to use a variant on the current um, radar, uh, ground penetrating radar setups. I know that there are several ground penetrating radar setups that are capable of penetrating brescium, but can they tell a bone from, or a fossilized bone, which is actually more like a rock than a real bone anymore, uh, from different types of rocks? I don't know. I have a suspicion that with sufficient computing power, they could. At which point you say, okay, where are they going to get computing power? And I can tell you the answer right now. Advanced Micro Devices and NVIDIA are both making absolutely incredible, the powerful um, cards right now, which are designed for AI work, um, AI inferencing, they call it. And the uh, large supercomputers, like the uh, upcoming Summit supercomputer, which actually they're using Intel, I believe, but there's this huge number of supercomputers out there that are running AMD or NVIDIA accelerators. And well, actually getting time on a supercomputer is a bit difficult. There's also the opportunity of using stuff like the um, AMD framework or postgressors with this type of card. Rather than you know having a giant supercomputer, you run one <laughs> heck of a desktop. Well, they call it a high-end desktop. I call it a workstation myself. And you know, okay, so you scan a wall and maybe it takes uh, a you know day to scan the wall and you feed the information to the computer, go away. And maybe a month later you might get the answer. It might be a bit slow, but a lot less expensive. This sort of technology could transform uh, paleoanthropology because our biggest problem right now is finding things. We just can't find enough stuff to make up the, uh, you know, just to fill in the holes and help us understand.
again, where we came from. And for that matter, where our very, very friendly um, fuzzy came from. Cleopatra, Leo, come here. Come here, baby. Hello, folks. Meet Cleopatra. See? She's a wolf. <clears throat> she doesn't know it, though. And she's absolutely adorable. Anyway, that was where I was going with this one. And so it's really a project I'd like to see somebody work on. I'd love to work on it myself, but I haven't got the skills. And uh, quite frankly, um, with my body being in the sort of shape it's in, the idea of me trying to go to school to get the skills is not feasible. But I'm sure there's somebody else out there. There's hundreds of young, if not thousands of young scientists who would absolutely love to do something like this and would want to make a difference. Folks, I call to you. You think you can make a difference? If you could do, give it a try. Thumbs up, everybody. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, uh, Happy Kwanzaa. I don't remember all the other ones right now. My apologies. I should have written that down before I started this um, video, but hey, I'm still learning. And I have no doubt that um, I will get better eventually. <laughs> have fun, folks. Bye-bye.